very serious concern we want to be looking at, which is the concern around um, recurring boat accidents in Nigeria. Um, the record has it that um, in last year, in the year 2023, uh, we recorded over 200 um, lives were lost. Yes, over 200 lives were lost uh, last year, given to boat, um, boat mishaps. So just um, last week, we are all aware of um, uh, the one that occurred somewhere in, in uh, Bayesa State, Andoni. Andoni, I want to believe it's in Bayesa State or River State. Uh, Andoni uh, was not a very good experience to where about five people have been, uh, were, were fed dead and many, many injured. Uh, we're looking at how we can curb, curb this concern around um, uh, boat, boat accident. Andoni, India. Uh, let, let, let's run this and see. Um, I, I don't know how this comes to you, how this really, really comes to you. Uh, we, we have concerns around uh, poor maintenance of, um, of these boats. We have concerns around um, overcrowding of these boats. as uh, many, many reasons why these boats keep, uh, you know, getting involved in accidents. I, I don't know what your perspective to this uh, uh, concern could be on the now. You know, I, I had the privilege of traveling. I had the privilege of traveling to the Niger Delta a couple of years ago, and I saw certain things for myself firsthand. Um, even though we traveled at the behest of the Nigerian Navy, they ensured that for everyone who was going to uh, have a boat ride or take a boat ride was properly um, protected, wearing the protective them. gears and all of that. But I noticed something with uh, the locals from Delta State to Rivers. Um, these people don't just care. I mean, they get into their canoe and sometimes their boats and just ride and just ride along, you know, uh, without necessarily taking safety precautions. Um, you know, for those of us who drive, you know, one thing that you're often told is that you need to put on your seat belts. And we have men of the Federal Road Safety Corporation monitoring um, drivers to, to take safety precautions. Now, I don't know what happens in the case of maritime, but I think it's important that we have an organization or a body that is responsible in ensuring the safety of passengers on our waterways, or else this sort of thing will keep happening. I mean, I mean, look at the lives of the young people, parents, children that were caught short a couple of days ago in River State as a result of that accident that happened or the boat mishap that happened, it's quite unfortunate and it's heartbreaking. But it all boils down to the attitude of most Nigerians where we don't take safety as, um, we don't place importance on safety. Again, I recall that uh, my father, who used to be a textile, uh, a textile uh, worker back in the day, I mean, whenever he, whatever he wanted to approach as a technician, he would tell you yeah, outrightly that, look, safety up. first. Safety first, but that is not the case with most Nigerians, unfortunately. We don't ever, ever put value or place a premium on safety. We just get to do stuff, you know, without considering the risk um, therein. So, yes, um, that is why we may keep dealing with some of these issues on our hands. And I hope that uh, uh, the authorities will address this as quickly as possible. Yes, um, that's exactly what uh, we all hope. Uh, Balogu. Uh, Ghani Balogu has joined us right now. He's our guest. Uh, he's uh, the National President, Association of Tourist Boat Operators and Water Transportation in Nigeria. Uh, it's, a long, it's a long acronym there. Uh, but then Ghani Balogu is joining us via Zoom this beautiful morning. So good to have you on the show, sir. Good morning. Welcome to News Up. Thank you, thank very, you very much. Good morning. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. Very 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 all right. Um, thank you for the efforts. I could see you are probably uh, in transit, but um, you still made the effort to talk to us. Fantastic. T tell me, what can you make of the recurring boat accidents in, in Nigeria? You, 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 you are in the, se in the you, you, you operate within the sector. Why can't we have a grip of um, what the challenges are uh, within uh, the maritime sector with greater emphasis on... Um, uh, both, both mishaps, both operators. Yeah, you, you see, it, it, it has a lot to uh, a lot has to be done 
in the hands of the government as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I think is that the, uh, the marine, marine sector of it is on the phone. Let me use that word. I'm sorry. You know, and sometimes it's scary to talk, to say the truth, or to 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 to, to knock the nail on the on, on, on the head because some of the civil servant looks at you as if you are just trying to vindicate them or you are trying to expose what they are doing. But the truth has to be said. I've been in the boat business for over 30 years, and I mean, and I experienced a lot from the boat. I mean, from the passengers as well some of the passengers like the other guy the other gentleman just said now nigerians doesn't take safety as a priority at all sometimes even two days ago i was in battery where my boots were going back and forth you won't believe me they insult, the passengers insult me and say that what's your business I, if i put the life jacket on or not what's your business excuse me if you don't want to put the life jacket on please you can't enter this boat that means you want to go and commit suicide anything can happen at any time so if you want to commit suicide, go to on top of the bridge and jump into the water instead of coming to trade problems and all that. So that is the part of the passengers themselves. Most of them, in fact, let me just say 70% of the passengers are very, very difficult to deal with. But you have to stand your feet. You don't want to you use the life jacket, go back and collect your money from the ticketer. That's it. So they look at you as someone that is arrogant and all that. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I said, no, if you don't want to obey the rules and the sort of our boat business here, you can't board our boat. So some of them go back. That's a scenario. A lawyer, a lawyer has his wig and boots in his hand and wanted to go to the boat. Fortunately for me that day, I was on the jetty. He said, look, who are you? I said, I'm one of the staff. He said, go, if, if I can't enter the boat, that day, go and bring that ticket for me. I said, I'm sorry, sir. At the point of where you bought your ticket, is written, life jacket must be worn before going out of the ticket office. So you have to go and get the life jacket. He said, you are stupid. I said, yes, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't enter this boat. Do you know who I am? I said, I don't know who you are, and I don't want to know. If you don't go and pick your life, he said, I should go and bring it. I said, I'm sorry, I can't go. One of my boys, one I said, no. Anybody before leaving the ticket office must put on the life jacket, and the life jackets are available. Then later on, somebody else to that. That is the you are talking to. I said, excuse me, please. I don't have to be here for this people to obey the rules and regulations of the water. Now, when I talk about government, I'm just talking about passengers. Our own boat of as well, it is true. Some of them doesn't bother. They only want the money, money, money. And we have to change this attitude. Nigerians have to change. Not money. Money, yeah, money will come. But money should not be the priority. The priority should be safety of the person you are serving. If, if somebody dies in the water today, it sends 100 people away. That's what I used to tell them when we have a meeting. When we have our meeting, we have every Wednesday our uh, boat operators meeting in Lagos, but I'm in Lagos State. Then the, 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 the national one is once in three months, that's four times in a year. So my, 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 my appeal to them is that, please, can you look at your boat, I mean, the life jacket, as propeller of an engine of your boat? Without the propeller, the boat can never move. So look at the passenger that they must wear a life jacket. If they don't wear a life jacket, they shouldn't go. Now, when I talk about government, is that if they have the beast masters, which that's why that's one of the reasons why I said it could be under fund that they, they, they don't they don't fund the ministry who are in charge of because I believe in, I'm close to the, the state and the federal and I know what they go through sometimes um, there is fuel issue that 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 I'm sorry if uh, what I'm saying affects the people on top or the grassroots or whatever but the truth has to be said they must be properly fund in terms of before the boat leaves the jetty any jetty before the boat leaves they be sure that everybody's wearing the life jacket. Accident can happen at any time. All right? We never know. I mean, the, a log can be on the water and the boat goes on top of it. You yank on the boat and there's water coming into the boat. So the, the, the government has a lot to do when we are talking about safety. But without the fund, we, we can't compare the road and the water. We can only compare water and the air. Those who operate planes know how much money they are involved in operating planes to make sure it is standard. So the same thing applies to the waterways. So the government has to take hold the bull, the, the, the bull at the horn, to be sure before your boat leaves the jetty, you must make sure your passengers are even the boat the captain, the operator himself. I, 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 in in my jetty, if I see anybody on the boat with that life jacket before the boat moves, the the, the captain will pay five thousand naira. Then you. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. You've talked about um, the fact that it's a policy uh, to 
for the passengers to wear their seat belt. I mean, that's a seat belt. They are life, they're life jackets. Life jackets. Yeah. Um, do you have such policies around them um, ensuring that every boat must have not expired life jackets? Do you have such policies that would ensure that the boat are well maintained? Do you have policies yeah. that would equally ensure that the boats are not overcrowded? Do you have such policies? Because these are identified yeah. reasons why we have frequent um, uh, boat mishaps in Nigeria. Yeah. Look at the picture we have on, on the screen right about now um, and how, yeah. how, how scary that could be. Um, should there be a wave, um, uh, maybe an unexpected wave, that boat you just see there, or, or cane rather, or a boat or a cane, will, 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 tumble, will, will topple over. Do you have such policies in place? Because these are key concerns that have been raised. Yes, I, I want to tell you that 99.9% .9 those policies are there. It's not the implementation. Like I said earlier on, the state or the federal need to fund the, 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 the regulatory bodies that are in charge so that they have enough well, they have their boots. You see, you, 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 you have to be good to tell somebody that is bad to be good. But if you yourself are, you are bad, how do you want? It's just like on the road, then, then the, 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 the police cars, who has no full light, is stopping me that my car has only one light. Meanwhile, he, he doesn't even have light at all. So you know what I'm saying? So the policies are there. But I, I, I don't want to say, because Niwa, Laswa, Nemasa, NPA, all those people, if they were well funded so that they put everything in place. All right, let, let me give another scenario. On the waterways today, even the marine police boats sometimes are not up to standard with the boat that they are going to, someone they want to arrest or to stop. As I'm talking to you now, I'm driving, but I have to park my car. So I'm in the car. I park so that I can, you know, uh, contribute to whatever I'm saying or face this interview. The policies are there. The implementation of the problem. We, our association has suggested that we should have floating, um, um, floating, what do you call it? Um, a floating first station and floating, um, um, what do you call this? Checkpoint, checkpoint on the waterways. So that any boat that is going, the police has a right to stop them and check if the passenger on board of the boat are wearing that. I can't arrest people. I can only stop people from using my own boat without life jacket. I can stop the passenger not to enter the boat. Because the policy even said you must provide life jacket for all the passengers. So the policy are there. And then your boat, there is a new one there, there is last one. Before you operate your boat, you must take it for uh, registration. During the registration, they now look at your boat. If you see what we, then they allow you to do that. But uh, not everybody takes their boat to, the, to, to those by, um, regulatory bodies that I've just mentioned now. Not everybody does that. But that is why the marine police on the waterways will now do what? Check the boat. If your boat is not up to standard or you don't have enough life jacket for your passenger or you are carrying passenger without life jacket, they will arrest you. So, and, and also, I want to say something. You see, the marine police should be independent from uh, Lastwa or from uh, uh, Niwa. Niwa. Yeah, Niwa could have their own police. Lastwa should have their own police to protect their staff but not for inspection of boat on the waterways, just like on the road. The people that, are, uh, that are register your vehicle are not the one on the road to check. Because uh, uh, if the person who registered the car is the same man on the road, he will say, ah, this is my friend, let him go. All so right, we have Daniel. to have independent... Yeah. All right, Ganyu. Ganyu. Um, well, we're, we're, our time is fast spent. All right, Ganyu. Uh, um, well, we're, we're, our just... time is fast spent. And uh, you actually have just touched on a subject I was hoping, a question I was hoping to ask you. But then let's leave that. Uh, it, this is just one question I need to ask. And maybe you can address this in 45 seconds at most. Um, in an event where a boat mishap happens, what should be the immediate reaction of the victims, who perhaps may be conscious, uh, in order just to save more lives or wait for uh, rescue operations, what should be the first response of a victim when a boat mishap happens? 45 seconds, please. I, I agree with you. Unfortunately, you can't say that accident is going to happen. But prevention is better than cure. The best thing for the person involved is that the life jacket on him must be properly worn. Once you are in the water and you wear your life jacket properly, you'll be floating. So other boats or rescue 
will come over to assist you. But if it is when the accident happened, that way you started putting your life jacket on, it's too late to cry when the head is off. All right, that was simple and uh, short. He kept I, it simple and short. I, 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 All right, David, back, back to you in Vegas. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you, Andunan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ganil. But I'm, I'm also very concerned about the, the fact that most of those life jackets, I've heard um, some, some uh, passengers complain that um, the life jackets are either uh, expired or not exactly very adequate. So we also must ensure that whilst there's a policy that everybody must wear their life jacket, we should also ensure that those life jackets are, you know, not expired life jacket that could indeed save lives, Mr. Ganil. That I think should also be. I agree. I agree with you completely. I agree with you completely. You see, uh, that is why Laswa or Niwa they go around the, uh, the cities. I just put in 150 life jacket on the 29th of December to remove all the one I have there. My passengers or some of the passengers that are passing that place will be able to tell you that. Unfortunately, it's expensive, definitely, but the life is more expensive than, than the life jacket, so we need to provide. I agree with you. There's some uh, uh, expired life jacket, there's some torn life jacket. The lifespan of the life jacket could be 10 years, but if it's not properly used and properly kept, if the damage, if it's uh, exposed to this, under the sun and it's very hot, the, the, the equipment, the, uh, the, the chemical inside the life jacket Will, will, will be destroyed, so it will not, it will not be used anymore. That's why it is good for the government to have representative on their jetties, but they can't do that on all jetties. But they can provide boats that goes around to be sure that the life jacket being used are up to date. Thank you so very much, um, Gani Ubalogun, the National President, Association of Tourist uh, Boat Operators and Water Transportation of Nigeria. It's a pleasure having you talk to us on the news up. Do have a great day and please stay safe and ensure Nigerians are safe as well.